Kunal, what a way to start uh, the new year when you've got uh, Ranju Valayat, Managing Director and Portfolio Manager with Equity Intelligence and India. Everyone knows him, but he's rarely seen on TV. So today he's uh, been kind enough with his time and he's joining us live from his office on the first day of 2000, on the first trading day of 2023 uh, to really share his market outlook, themes, businesses and uh, what does he like and what does he, what should one avoid for 2023. Runjo, so nice to have you back. How you been my friend? Long time no see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great uh, Nigunj. And thank you so much for inviting uh, inviting me. And uh, I'd like to wish uh, you, the team, Titi now, and all the viewers, you know, a wonderful uh, New Year, 2023. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, an amazing year for all the investors. Maybe not in terms of uh, uh, NFT or index movement. Uh, it's going to be a very comfortable year. There is no doubt about it. Why do you say like that? Why do you think it will be a comfortable year for a stock picker like uh, for a stock picker like you? See, on the macros now, all the smart guys out there have been talking about the India, uh, you know, being in a sweet spot in an otherwise challenging global environment. Uh, I think India is, uh, you know, at the, at the beginning of a massive scale up in its uh, size of the economy the per capita GDP, the per capita income, and, you know, the wealth uh, over the coming years, as the coming decade, I would say. So there is no two thoughts about it. Everybody's agreeing to that. Um, so how in equity investors are going to make it? Uh, so you have to believe in equities. Uh, and, you know, it is, it is a proven thing to make long-term wealth. There is nothing like equity. Uh, you know, uh, so I think it's going to be a wonderful year in that uh, perspective. Anju, the space where you've invested traditionally is the mid and the small cap space. And over the years, there have been uh, quite a, there has been a big shakeout in the small and the mid cap space. While 2022 will be remembered as a year where PSU and a lot of mid cap banks made a comeback, it will also be remembered as a year when fintech and a lot of mid-cap IT stocks they took a whack. What to your mind from the small and the mid-cap space will be the highlight theme for 2023? We continue to be in that space, uh, Nigunj. Even though sometimes we have moved uh, occasionally to larger companies like uh, uh, Tata Communications kind of stocks or Tata Dorages, the Tata Consumer, uh, which we are out already. So, but the focus is on, you know, um, looking at emerging stories and uh, turnaround companies, and especially with regard to the management uh, perception, which I used to talk always about. We haven't changed that at all. Of course, we had, you know, mistakes. Mistakes is, a, you know, it's an integral part of uh, equity investing. There is no escape to that. There is a risk. There is a risk day in and day out. We have to live with that. But that doesn't mean, you know, uh, people with investable funds just avoid equities and uh, buy, uh, buy into real estate or uh, FDs and gold. I think that era is over. India is seeing a tremendous change, a structural change in terms of the stock market structure, I would say. There is, there is you know, we, we used to have, uh, you know, in the 90s, the brokers were very powerful in the market opinion makers, and uh, they used to control the market. Then we moved to an era of where we used to go to uh, the, follow the HNI, the fancy investors, operators in the market. Then again, the time came, you know, we moved into the funds, DIS and FIS, and the, some of the star fund managers used to, uh, you know, uh, have a big say in the market direction, in the valuation aspects. And um, I think we used to depend a lot on, you know, we used to debate about FIA buying, selling, and how domestic investors buying, selling. So that, I think we are getting uh, uh, into a different uh, orbit now, a stock market, the capital market um, system. There are millions and millions of retail investors are coming into the market. 
there are uh, multiple players in the market, not just uh, one, two, or three. The different formats. There are mutual funds, of course, is going stronger. Uh, there are uh, PMS, AF, the family offices, hedge funds. There are multiple manifold, uh, uh, you know, sectors in the within the stock market, and uh, the regulators are doing a great job. Uh, I think more and more regulation coming in. Some of them sometimes we may dislike because we find it is a little complicated. But ultimately, these are going to lead to a very strong stock market system and the process. And, uh, you know, now many, many very wonderfully performing mutual funds. Nobody knows who is manager, who is the fund manager. Without the fund manager's name, there are large institutionalized fund management is happening and performing well. So this is something, uh, you know, structurally, system-wise, we are into a wonderful well-grown, uh, mature capital market in India. And on an economy front, we have all those aspects, uh, you know, all the, all the experts in the market, they have been talking about all these things. We have uh, various things, uh, general aspects like, uh, you know, the young population. Right. We'll talk about the wonderful large-scale reforms happening in the country a complete cleanup of the banking system, which is very important. A lot of people are under, underestimating right. that. It's not, a, it's not a small thing. And, uh, you know, see the, the multipolar geopolitics happening in the globally, it's helping India tremendously in various aspects. So th there, are, there are a lot of that and, uh, you know, stable politics. We have been right. going through some steps. Fair point. Uh, you've laid the architecture very well, Pranjo, in terms of why you should be investing in equities, why the appeal to investors in terms of the India story and the underlying dynamics and how regulation and how the on-ground uh, surveillance and other reforms are active. So my question is that somebody who's watching the interview says, okay, I completely endorse what Pranju has to say in terms of the India appeal and equities where I want to be in. But every fund manager, and I've known you over years now, so I'm taking the liberty of using my past experience here, follows the anchoring theme. There are a lot of themes happening in India. Manufacturing, financials, IT, uh, even consumer. What are What is the anchoring theme of your portfolio for the next three years, or next five years? I think the industrials is something, um, you know, when we say industrials, the manufacturing, the... Um, you know, the defense, perhaps the, the our infrastructure. I think we have been going through not so great times uh, in the in the in the recent past or maybe last uh, decade. So that is basically turning around with the new themes and initiatives and the reforms happening, uh, you know, the make in India kind of things. So that's something uh, going to really help uh, equity investors. That's one segment, a micro segment, I would say. Uh, investors should focus in the coming years. There's a lot of money to be made, a lot of wealth to be created. But if somebody is looking at, you know, to make money in next month or next quarter, I don't know. And even 2023, who knows, is going to be creating a lot of wealth for share, uh, shareholders. It's not that predictable. I don't know. And I don't think anybody really knows it. So any such kind of predictions can go wrong. So um, I think this is one um, aspect and we had, a, you know, the IT and pharma, which was uh, beaten down in the last many years. I think that sector is IT and pharma. It's time to look at, start looking at it. There's no hurry. Uh, but it doesn't mean every stock in the sector is going to go up. There are wonderful pockets of opportunities in those sectors, I feel, for the next five, ten years. So um, I think India has more than sectors, you know, the cherry picking of stocks, the selective stock picking, it's uh, even 2023 is going to be rewarding. There's no doubt about it. I can go wrong in, or anybody can go wrong in predicting the index, but uh, that trajectory of uh, wealth creation or returns, it's going to be definitely very, very positive in 2023 and the coming years. Coincidence that you have a lot of Tata stocks in your portfolio. You've specifically mentioned two, Tata Alexi which you sold, Tata Consumer, which I think you had, and uh, then Tata Communication, what you currently have. 
just a coincidence? Um, not really. One of our largest holding is Tata Communication. Did not perform much in the last one year, if you see. I think some 5-10%. Um, but uh, we believe in this stock. Um, uh, it's one of the Tata companies and as a technology company. It's not just, you know, the voice and data infrastructure company. It's going beyond that. That's what the management is guiding. And, you know, the kind of um, resources they have been investing in the company um, uh, and the kind of... Uh, human resources, what is brought into the company. And uh, I think this is one company one should bet on. It's, it's around 30, 35,000 crores market cap. Uh, I think um, I, I think it's very good, but the, the risk is there all around, uh, any any equity, anywhere. So I'm not telling as a foolproof, but one of the very good uh, companies among mid caps, uh, you know, uh, for investors to look for. We continue to hold the stocks. Of course, we are buying the stock from 300, 400 onwards. Now it's around 1,200, 300. Um, so there are many Tata companies. We exited Tata Consumer last year. And uh, Tata Alexi also we had exited. The Indian hotels we exited a bit early. There was a big rise afterwards. Um, so Tata companies have been doing very well, but we can't expect the kind of uh, return in the last two, three years in Tata Group companies which is not sustainable. It was very uh, amazing growth. But there are pockets uh, people should be looking at, you know. Now, see, one thing I have been looking at is, you know, some of these um, people say the old economy stocks. There is a dramatic transformation happening in some of those old established uh, legacy companies, legacy businesses, uh, you know, asset-based. So people have been all going into the fancy IPOs in the last two, three years which were in general overpriced, highly overpriced, some of them, comparing to the listed companies in the same space, same well-managed companies. So that's something uh, I used to be surprised about. I am still surprised. The reason I bought uh, Raymond's uh, one and a half years ago, two years ago, uh, you know, in 2021, the maneuver, I'm just telling an example, not recommending any stocks, you know, the maneuver was planning an IPO. It was in the newspaper. Um, it had around 20,000 gross valuation. It's a good company, of course. But, you know, when I see the size, the business potential, uh, you know, other aspects of the company, I was comparing it with Raymond. So Raymond was available at 2,500 crores, 3,000 crores, when maneuver was planning an IPO at 20,000 crores. So it was a huge surprise to me. And I would say Maneuver was just like a fraction of Raymond. But this may be not very uh, straight, comparable uh, businesses or companies. I'm not uh, telling that. But there are com points to compare. Uh, there could be issues about the management perception among the investing community. And so, but in any case, the new issues, it was over fancied. Everyone, most of the market players, even retail people were going after them. And I think a lot of them had to pay a heavy price. Many of these companies, you know, they were already overpriced at the, at the IPO valuations. From there, it has gone two and three times, some of them. And now they are all coming back to earth, to normal valuations. I think some of them are yet to correct further. They need to correct further to come to real reasonable valuation at par with the other earlier listed companies. So this is another opportunity. I'm talking about some of these, you know, the old established uh, legacy companies and businesses. Investors should look for in 2023 also. Uh, so where do you see this combination of a disconnect in terms of valuation versus growth? or disconnect in terms of management and business perception versus the underlying strength of the business? See, the valuation and growth, people always, you know, balance it and uh, uh, it's based on the growth. Um, but there is, uh, in the last two years, when we had this move from, uh, from the bottom of uh, 2020, uh, pandemic time, you know, I think uh, many of those valuations in many companies, it has gone crazy. Uh, they have been wrong 
and uh, it may take uh, maybe three, four, five years, some of them to reach that valuation again. They are a wonderful company. They are growing very big, very well, uh, superior to the other companies. But for everything, there is a price, uh, Nikunj. So, so people, uh, you know, it's a strategy to buy. Uh, nothing wrong in that. Every, every fund manager has uh, individual strategy, very unique strategies. And, uh, uh, but for everything, there is good and bad times. So uh, getting carried away is one issue in valuations and um, getting carried away with the small caps is another issue. I had it in my uh, 2018. I got carried away and um, I've paid a heavy price for that. And uh, the investors who invested with us in 2017 at the peak of that small mid cap strategy, some of them are yet to recover, you know, fully. So, so this, uh, basically, the, people make mistakes on the valuations, as you rightly was talking about the valuation and growth. So it's, it's a very tricky thing. That's, a, that's why equity is such a most dynamic investment uh, avenue. It's, there is no certainty. There are risk um, and there is reward. And I would say in, when you look at, you know, um, doing some kind of... Um, um, exp exploring equities and understanding businesses and you invest for longer term with a uh, reasonably diversified portfolio, somebody creating it. See, in that aspect, for long-term investors, equity is not risky. So if, if that basic principle is to be followed. I also had some you know, highly uh, concentrated bets in not so proven companies and that's why that 2018 happened. So we have made very significant changes in our investment philosophy, but the basic investing philosophy doesn't change. I'm talking about, you know, that some little repairing here and there, and uh, that has really helped us later. And uh, we are with uh, full confidence and uh, moving ahead very well. So, so good to hear that. We've seen a massive re-rating in the value end of the market, banks, defense, railway stocks, is that one time re rating which happened because of uh, the you know because of rising interest rates and growth stocks getting re rated from a market standpoint is that over or you still feel that there is money could be made in buying small psu banks psu stocks railway stocks this all are a bit cyclical in my understanding Nirunj. Uh, you know now the psu banks moved some 70% this year so that doesn't mean that investors should go out and buy uh, ESU banks for next uh, next year. That's an, I don't know that way. They may be looking very underpriced, looking at the past uh, price movement last 10, 20 years. Some of them are still quoting below 10 years, 15 years ago uh, valuation or price. So this 70% one year uh, movement should not excite anybody for the future. I'm not telling bad or uh, good about uh, banking sector. Uh, but this happens across sectors. Uh, now, the railway stocks and all, I have burned my fingers uh, a few years ago, looking at that, uh, you know, Tetago Wagon and all those kind of stocks. Uh, of course, we are uh, holding BML now, Bharat Earth Movers. That's one, one theme was the uh, indicated ESU disinvestment. Uh, so th there could be pockets uh, of opportunities in all these kind of securities and uh, structural changes and uh, the growth stocks. Opportunity is there all over. Similarly, risk is also there all over the space. I'll go back to this whole uh, idea of yours of management perception. Now, exactly a year ago, the management perception for some of the fintech and the consumer tech stock was very different. They were considered as entrepreneurs who understood growth and the model of New India. They were called as a great incubators with big ideas which would be the next which will drive the next phase of growth for india's economic growth that was the image for some of the startup and some of the consumer and fintech owners or promoters or founders in this case but now the management perception and the market positioning for some of these stocks has changed markets are raising concerns about cash flow high growth but no cash high growth but no focus on ebitda is it a good time to buy into 
some of these stocks because if you look at the management perception the management perception in the last one year has changed 180 degree see the the biggest challenge in the past has been this management perception and you know it was true that uh, investors uh, the fear about uh, promoters or the management action uh, whether they will accommodate and take care of the minority shareholders in in creating and sharing the wealth so that was real serious concern but that is significantly changing anikun there is no doubt about that now uh, now very the crooked kind of uh, promoters and management it will be difficult for them to survive and you know because uh, it is so the system is so transparent regulatory is so much uh, you know aware about things and doing the right actions and uh, and you know creating regulations so the whole uh, landscape is changing for the for the for the promoters and management to you know to use the listed companies for creating wealth for their own thing and you know for uh, for cheating investors and uh, looting investors kind of thing i think this will be the past in the very soon we will we will uh, come to that kind of a level there are still many small and mid cap why there are small and mid cap companies uh, many of them have this issue because the the small and mid cap is very large in number we have only few companies for blue, blue chip large company so it is quite uh, you know there are uh, bad promoters in, in uh, large cap companies also sometimes we have seen we have come across mismanaged companies or you know uh, indulging in various unethical practices uh, without taking care of the minority shareholders all those things are there all over the space here um, i think in 2023 investors should not ignore the old economy companies just because uh you know the promoters may have a history of uh, you know not uh, managing the company ethically and honestly we one has to be watchful whether there is any dramatic changes happening a paradigm shift is happening in the vision and the behavior of the promoters management uh you know provided all these things are valuable only if the business is valuable it is futuristic and future relevant otherwise there is no point in uh, you know even identifying trying to attempting to identify those promoter qualities so the turn around in the management quality is one theme it will continue to play i played it a bit early in 2016 17 and i had to pay a price we all live and we all learn and you've been very uh, candid in sharing uh, your experiences and your journey as a fund manager yes uh, you know markets uh, are leveling markets teach you but it is important to perhaps learn and then adapt and that is what you're doing and that is what is so great about the way you manage public money uh, so there were imbalances those imbalances are weeded out and uh, while you spoke about how things have changed uh, for india i guess next couple of years for the economy for the market for the country in general i think uh, are looking extremely extremely charged up so so nice to have you back on et now and wish you and your family and everyone um, and kochi and everyone's part of your team a wonderful 2023 ahead thank you thank you so much nigunj and the team et now all the best